Dr. Thompson, thank you very much for agreeing to do this interview. Pleasure, uh, Monica. It's a pleasure. Uh, really good to speak to you. Um, I, I think that there's a lot of people in the Spanish-speaking world who are getting very excited about RAW, and um, it's it's great to be able to to uh, communicate with them and you know uh, any vets, vet nurses out there who want to come and join us at the RAW Feeding Veterinary Society. We would be open. Uh, we would greet you with open arms. And if you're uh, if you're not a vet a vet nurse, you can also share the uh, the revolution, the raw revolution, by joining the Raw Feeding Veterinary Society uh, public uh, public discussion group as well. So lots lots of uh, of ways of, of of being being part of the uh, the revolution. That's amazing. You just answered one of my last questions, so that's fine. My question was, how can we help, right, the, the raw feed in veterinary society? But, but yeah, in the Spanish-speaking world, there's, there's a lot of interest. That people are eager for information. There's not a lot of information in Spanish. So it's amazing, and I, I really want them, I want them to see what you're doing, what, what's happening with the society, and, and what's going on worldwide. I know there's this huge revolution. Not only in Spain, but in Latin America also. There's raw feeding starting to get into vet schools, and that is amazing. I think. That's Seriously, cool. raw feeding in vet schools. Yes, yes. It's like, like in Chile, I know in Chile, for example, they're starting to do it in vet schools. I've had a couple of vets from Chile doing courses with me. That then they're mm. teachers in the university, so they're just mm. you know fighting for it, and they're getting in it. So it's, it's beautiful. That's amazing. Could you put me in touch with some of those guys? I will. I and certainly will. That would be amazing. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I'm really happy to present you and your work to them. You know what I mean? So, Great. So let's start a little bit by the beginning. How did you start with rock feeding? Do you remember the first time you heard about it? And what was your first thought when you heard about it? Okay. So uh, I first came across raw feeding in the 90s. Uh, I, was, I was studying homeopathy, uh, veterinary homeopathy, and one of the guys had been out to Australia and came back with this little white book called, uh, 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 what, was, what was his first, uh, Ian Billinghurst first book? Uh, 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 give your dog a bone. Give your dog a bone, yeah. And then he had Grow Your pups with bones and and then he put them both together and called it that bath diet yeah. so it's the first his first book and I, I saw this book and I just thought it was a bit of a bit bit of a fad really I just thought uh, um, I, yeah it didn't I have to say yeah. I thought uh, it's it's, it, it's there's, there's not a lot to it but, uh, sorry, that's the phone. Um, uh, and and uh, so after that, with, within a very short time though, the, the concept of feeding a dog like a dog just struck me as being totally, totally uh, sensible. It fitted in very much with my, my, my ideas of holistic medicine in that uh, we all know that you are what you eat. And if you're eating really good quality species appropriate food, then you're going to stand the best opportunity to be well, to be healthy, to, uh, to be able to, to heal. There's, what, there's an element of homeopathy which says that um, you should... Uh, uh, um, remove obstacles to cure and it suddenly struck me that a massive obstacle to cure is feeding crap food if excuse my french yeah feeding feeding processed food you know we don't we don't feed it to children we don't feed it to we don't even feed it to 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 prisoners in in jails, you know, or or soldiers on the front line. They get real food, you know, species appropriate food. Yeah. And yet, with our dogs, who we prize and value so much, and our cats as well, uh, we feed them this processed rubbish. We we I think we've been brainwashed yeah, yeah, yeah. into somehow thinking 
They're dogs, so they should eat dog food. Cats, so they should eat cat food. Uh, and, you know, every other species, you talk to zoo vets and they'll say, oh yeah, you know, an iguana, you feed like an iguana. A bear, you feed like a bear. You know, uh, and yet with dogs and cats, we feed them like cattle. We're feeding them high cereal kibble, which, which is a travesty for a dog, but uh, uh, which is at the top end of omnivory or at the bottom end of carnivory. But it's even worse. It's even more of an insult to cats, yeah, yeah. because they are, they are obligate carnivores. And here we are feeding them loads of cereal. And what happens? We get obesity. We get diabetes. We get uh, sickness, immunological disease, and what have you. So, um, yeah, it just makes so much sense to, to feed a dog and a cat like a dog and a cat. But like what they are, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, you know what, it's the simplest thing in the world. It's, I always say, raw food is like selling water in the desert. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah no. Just, and you just said about it, brain, it, sorry. Mm, no, it sells itself. That's the, 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 the reason that the revolution has really taken hold is because people can see the results within, within a, even a, two weeks on the raw food diet you can see things happening to your dog where, uh, where they're obviously healthier uh, because of the raw food diet, okay? And so people go, aha, wow, this is amazing. I'm changing this dog's life by, just, uh, by, by feeding this new way of feeding, and thus they tell their friends, and so it, it, it blossoms, you know? Uh, and so that's, that is what has driven this revolution. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. And what you were saying about brainwashing, I, I always say that I think that the marketing campaign from Kibble, it should be labeled as the most successful of all time. Like, because the problem is people, they really think they're doing the best for the dogs and cats. Yeah. This, this is the problem because yeah. you know that yeah. if you eat crappy food, if you eat fast food, you're gonna get, if you eat it every day, you're going to get sick. The problem yeah, yeah, yeah. is yeah. they don't know. They, 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 they're really convinced. Even the vets that they've been yeah. brainwashed too. So it's, it's just, that's, that's the saddest thing, right? People think when, when they finally hear the concept and they finally, and they see the light and they're like, oh, I can't believe I've been doing this to my dog or my cat. And I always I tell them, don't, please, like don't, don't worry because it's not your fault. You know what I mean? Sure. But, it's, it's like the uh, cigarette manufacturers, you know, in the 50s and the 60s yeah. and what have you, you know, uh, just it's, uh, yeah, I don't know how they live with themselves, really, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I have this conversation a lot yeah. and, and just thinking how, how can they live with themselves when they're feeding, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're selling this stuff and then they go home to their families and they have children and they feed them real species appropriate food. Seems crazy to me, yeah. but yeah, that's, but the, the world is changing, it's changing. you know, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, of course. the world is totally um, coming around to much more sensible uh, feeding practices, yeah, much, more, or, much more, much more uh, delicious feeding practices, much more, uh, um, uh, exciting, you know. Yeah. Most raw food feeders are really excited about food, yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, whereas on kibble, it was, mm, you know, I think a lot of people who have eaten, uh, who are feeding kibble, are actually a little bit guilty, feel a little bit guilty, which is why they always put a little bit of meat on top. You notice that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Kibble, often, 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 people put meat on top, and I think that's because their their instinct says. Oh, this yeah. stuff is so so dull and bland and boring, um, but you know everybody says I've got to feed it, so I'll just put a little bit of something on top, you know. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So, so once you you it it resonated within you. Once once you thought, of course, this is this is the right thing to do. You started. What what did you do? Do you start talking to your colleagues or carers or both? And well, how was the reaction at the beginning? Uh, I think uh, put 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 my own dogs onto onto raw for a start, 
um, and uh, and then started talking to people within the practice. I was mm. working with some really really great vets at that stage. I work on my own now, uh, uh, and and so you just within the practice we started uh, uh, exploring in 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 raw food and and uh, trying new cases on raw food. And, and so it just grew and grew and grew. And then I started doing some work with, in those days, there was a company called Anglian Meat Products. And they were the only, they were, they were a single raw food supplier. And basically they were just producing meat for the, for the pet industry, raw meat for the pet industry. And we did some work together and we looked at, we, 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 we did some diets and we, uh, we, we started doing some lecturing and doing some writing and, and what have you. And so things just grew and grew. But it wasn't, and, and so we're talking kind of 2000s at this stage. Uh, it wasn't until about 10 years ago that things really started to uh, pick up and more and more manufacturers. I guess actually only in, in, only in the last five years has it has you know the, the number of manufacturers really increased uh, exponentially um, but the faster it gets the bigger it gets I think the more momentum there is and the, the faster it's going to grow as well yeah, yeah, yeah so and and what do you think in, in your opinion and in, in your many years of experience are the the main fears that that still prevail among carers, <laughs> among vets. I think I think there is one that is more and more. Sorry, I'm I'm cold. I'm pumping it up. Okay. No, <laughs> um, no so um, the fears, right? Uh, among no. carers, among vets. What are mm. the main ones? What are the main fears? I do I do a lecture on this. I do a couple of yeah. hours on looking at the at the. Uh, the fears. I think the 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 main one is bacteria. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and then after that, it's bones. I think, and there are various things. Is it complete and balanced, and what have you? Uh, but just to just to address those two biggies. Yeah. The the bacteria question uh, is is pretty easily answered, and and there is, there are bugs. In, in meat, it's just, it's just uh, that's the way it is. Some, and there are low levels of pathogens in there as well. But currently in the world, there are hundreds of thousands of dogs and cats being fed this meat. And the number of, of, of uh, infection problems is minute. It's absolutely minute. Um, because dogs especially are, are very good at dealing with, you know, uh, reasonable levels of, of bacteria. With the bone thing, again, technically we, and, 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 and at college you're taught that the bones will, will cause foreign body obstructions and they'll get stuck in the throat and the gut and what have you. But in, in reality, it's very, very rare indeed. That uh, I, I always say to people, it's a bit like crossing the road. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, every year there are people who do get knocked over crossing the road. But if you compare it with the number of people who cross the road, yeah, exactly. you know, there must be, you know, 40 billion road crossing events in the UK every day. And yet, I don't know, 12 people are killed, something like that. So it's, 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 you're comparing a mountain and a mole um, and a molehill. Uh, would be what we say in English, you know, you're comparing a mountain and a molehill. Uh, uh, there is the, the molehill does exist, but it's very, very rare. And the benefits benefits to the teeth, benefits to the, the, the structure of the neck and shoulders, uh, the benefits from uh, minerals and better and psychological benefits to the dogs, uh, are enormous. So I think it's 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 definitely a justifiable thing and also there is an assumption that feeding kibble is 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 without risk yeah. but that is not the case so number one you can get there, there are cases numerous cases of salmonella in in kibble uh, and other bacteria 
there are, uh, you, uh, the risk of torsion and bloat mm -hmm. is always present, especially with the deep chested dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, that, you know, that, that, those are risks, but also just looking at uh, most of the dogs that I see are sick. And in many cases, all we do is we get them off kibble onto a, a good uh, raw food diet and they are better. So the risk doesn't need necessarily to be death or, or having to have surgery or something like that. It's, uh, the risk is uh, kibble causes disease and uh, in, 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 in a certain proportion of the animals that uh, that eat it so uh, i think we need to we need to have the realistic uh conversation to say these are the pros these are the cons of kibble yeah mm -hmm. there are pros there are cons mm -hmm. convenience for example uh and here are the pros and the cons of raw food you make it you make the decision you know that's the that's the adult conversation that yeah. uh, i think really needs to to be had whereas uh, uh, vets and vet nurses most vets and vet nurses assume that kibble is faultless and they just default to it things are changing but that's that's the, the assumption that we make in the veterinary profession yeah 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 and and one that i think is very also you mentioned it too is is balance right is is it complete imbalance is, and it's, yeah. it's, it's a fear that I see also like in people that have been feeding raw for years, they're still worried something's missing, right? Like they put a hundred billion supplements just in case. And they, yeah. like I've had people sending me menus like scheduled for the week that has 10 different kinds of protein. Like it's like veal yeah. in the morning, lamb at lunch, chicken at night. And then, and it's, it's this, you know, anxiety for something's going to be missing from the diet, right? T I know. Tell me about I that. I yeah, okay, so the complete and balanced thing is a loads of things to say about that. Uh, the first thing is to say that uh, these people who really risk, who, who really uh, are anxious about uh, the, the whole balance thing, they then uh, uh, go to the kitchen, cook some food, and eat it without. <laughs> any knowledge of the calorie content the calcium content the uh the unsaturated fatty acid content yeah so again completely blind to the fact that um uh, dogs and cats have evolved by eating a, a variety of appropriate foods and the body sorts itself out okay so the, the the this whole idea about complete and balanced i feel was was uh, uh, um, invented by the kibble manufacturers because they can only only manufacture you know one type of diet for puppies one type of diet for yeah. adults one type of diet for seniors okay yeah. uh, and and you have to feed that thing over a very, very long period. It's a uniform thing that you feed over a long period. Therefore, of course, they've got to, there's got to be some kind of approximation towards balance. Um, but when you're feeding raw food, if you feed a variety, the dog will look after itself. It will, it will select more calcium if it needs it, more magnesium if it needs it, more fat, less fat, um, depending on the age, the breed, the sex, the, the health, pregnancy, all of these things. So um, I think it's a, it's a misconception in a way, and it applies to the paradigm of, of, of kibble, uh, but not, it, it, it's not directly applicable to, to raw food, I feel. But that's, a, that's difficult for people to get their head around. Yeah, no, I, re I read the book, um, uh, Dr. Richard Patton's book. Have you read it? Oh, Ruined by you. Excess. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My lack. I think it's a, it's a, yep. it's a work of art. It's, 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 it's something great. that everybody should read because it's like we are adapted beautifully to lack. It's to excess that we haven't. It's, it's the excess that's yes. killing us, right? Yes, yeah. 
Definitely. Make sure that you put a, a reference on the uh, on the thing to yeah, to, the video. to yeah. Bridget Patton's book. Yeah, yeah it's really yeah, it's, it's, it's a must really for every vet. You know, yeah. and he's he's significant. You know, he's been feeding uh, zoo animals for yeah. thirty years. Yeah. You know, so he's 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 uh, he's somebody to listen to. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah very much that, so. That was one of my suggestions for for next year's conference. By the way, Patton, yeah, <laughs> I thought I thought about him. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to love to get him over. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah. He's and um, Susan Thixton. Yeah, love to get her. Susan Thixton. The truth about pet food. Love, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to get her. That would be yeah. exciting to get those two guys over. Um, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Dr. Jean Dots also. I uh, that was another Jean. one. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. There are so many people there that. That would be exactly. delightful to go hear them talk, right? Yeah, very much so. Um, I was uh, talking about, uh, I was interviewing Dr. Billinghurst and, and it was funny because I was telling him about my dogs that I have, I don't know when was the last time I took them to the vet. One is 11 years and she started on row when she was one. And I don't think yeah. I've taken her to the vet. In, I promise you in 10 years, it's incredible. And the other one is yeah. her daughter, who is five and has never been. And, mm -hmm. and he was saying to me that that's a mistake. He's like, you need to take your dogs, your healthy, raw fed dogs to the vet so that they see healthy. <laughs> so they ask you, what are you doing, by the way, with this yeah. dog? What are you feeding them? And then you can tell them, right? Because it's, it's a thing I, I, keep feeling like, I keep thinking, okay, how can we help? To, to get the word to vets, because I think you got the, you got the tough audience. I, I yeah. mostly talk to carers, and that is a very mm -hmm. eager audience, and they want to know, and they're open, and they're just... But vets, that's a different kind of, of yeah. audience, right? Yes, for sure. So, so I keep thinking sure. about that. I think, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think his, his idea to take your, your healthy dog to the vet to allow them to see because if they see on the notes that you haven't been for three years four years or something like that they they're probably going to ask you what are you doing you know they'll look at the teeth and they'll go oh my goodness amazing teeth mm -hmm. uh, and, uh you know because i think it's unknown really because i don't know what the average number of times that the average person visits a vet it must be once or twice a year I okay believe. some people obviously it's uh five times a year yeah. You know, with little niggly things here and there, um, but I think let's say it's twice a year. Okay, so if you haven't been to the vet for four years, that's eight visits that you haven't. That, that the average person would go and 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 for them to for them to see these dogs just just looking great, no problems with anal glands, no itch, no. Uh, uh, mucky ears and, and all these common, really, really, really common things. Yeah, yeah. Um, the fact that they're not getting it, I think, I think that is a, a, a good idea. However, they'll probably charge you for it, which is pretty <laughs> gore. You know, of course. take them to educate them, and then they say that'll be forty euros, please. It's like, yeah, no. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. High price, high price to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, it, and a little bit. yeah, regarding bets. Do you think there's anything that pet carers, apart from that, from taking the, the, the healthy, raw fed dogs to the vet? Because I have a lot of people complaining to me. They come and they say, listen, my pet, my, my vet is, told me off. He just told me off and it's horrible. They keep, and, and it's, it's tough because carers, they are open and they, they want to do it. But if the doctor yeah. says, you're going to kill that animal, then they're, they're really worried. Right, it's 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 very hard. Is there anything yeah. you think, or do you think it's only science that's going to get to the vet's heart? I think that uh, if your vet is really really anti you feeding raw, I think change your vet if you're able to. Yeah, if you're yeah. if you're in the middle of in the middle of nowhere uh, in in Chile or in, in Spain, and there's only one vet, then you haven't got any choice. Uh, in which case. Uh, you know, just uh, uh, do what you can to, 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 to discuss raw food. Because what happens often within, in the veterinary practice is that 
if you take the dog in and they say, uh, for, for, for whatever, and they say, oh, uh, no. If you take the dog in for something, at, for, for um, just a checkup, say, and, and, and they will say, oh, my goodness, the dog is looking really, really great. What do you feed? And then you say raw, and then they go silent. <laughs> okay, that's really <laughs> typical. Yeah. Or if you take the dog in with gut upset, for example, which is not very common in raw dogs, but you do see it, it will always be blamed on the raw food. Yeah. Whereas yeah. if you take a dog on kibble in with a gut upset, they won't say, oh, it's the food. You must change the food. Yeah. So. Yeah. For an evidence-based profession, it's it's a very uh, it's a it's a pretty illogical way to approach uh, these raw-fed dogs. You know, crazy. Yeah, no, it's incredible, and, and and I keep telling people also that because it's it's not only with bowel problems, but if they go, if they have a liver, if they have the enzymes um, high, the the level is high. So they they ask, what do you feed your dog? They say kibble. Oh, okay, okay, let's keep looking at other things. Yeah, they yeah, never yeah. the kibble, but if you say raw, that's it. Doesn't matter. That that's that's to blame, yeah. right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. And and how? Because of course, the science. We're we're trying to get there, right? There's there's people doing some very amazing work and interesting work. There's Anna and there's yeah. Dr. Mark Roberts and all these people doing stuff, but it. It seems that I don't know. Is it? Is it? Do you think it's getting there? Is it? A, is it enough? Is it going to be enough? Uh, to, I think there are, what there, do you think? there are some. Vets, yeah, there are some vets who will won't be convinced even when the science comes out. Okay, I think that's just the way that's human nature. Yeah. Uh, there is some very. There's a very interesting uh, paper that has just come out, which was uh, done by. Um, the guys at Honey's Real Pet Food. It's a UK, a UK food brand. And what what they did is they they had uh, they took 26 dogs and they put them onto a raw food diet for two years. Okay, and they did bloods before, during, and after that period, uh, which is which is considered to be. Um, Kind of the industry standard there you know afco is the american association of feed control officials they're basically the the pet food police okay and they say what to to uh, demonstrate that food is is safe and nutritious you just need to have eight dogs for six months on a food and if they don't die then uh, <laughs> and that, that, that they uh, and they only they only measure two or three parameters on blood, okay? And they don't measure the blood at the beginning, so <laughs> you, you can't, can't really tell, you know. So it's a ridiculous. It's the, the numbers are too small. Um, and if two of those dogs die during the thing, then you carry on just with the six that are that. left, okay? Yeah. And so as long as they're standing at the end of the <laughs> at the end of the trial, you, you get a big tick for your for the food, whatever it was. Um, and so what, what these guys did, Honeys, uh, and the, the, the paper is called uh, Raw Proof, Raw Proof. And, uh, and, and so what they did is they did said, right, we'll use a lot more dogs, we'll do it for a lot longer, and we will do bloods right at the beginning, mm. middle and end, and we'll make it a proper um, and, and, and uh, lifelike, realistic trial. And all the dogs, three uh, dropped out just for, for other reasons, only three. Uh, so 23 dogs completed the trial and they were hale and hearty through the whole thing. They were in great shape throughout. Yeah. And they had an independent vet who, who looked at them beginning, middle and end. And, and so, they, you know, there, there are trials, there, are, there is proof uh, to, to show that uh, that raw food is 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 healthy and, and nutritious. I myself did a did a, a paper, um, and it's just going to be published next year, where I I spoke to seventy nine vets around the world. We have people from Spain and from uh, Europe and Australia and USA, and I just asked them uh, 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 six simple questions okay. and. 
uh, between them at the time, they had over, they had almost a thousand years of experience between oh, them. Wow. Yeah? Oh, wow. 79 vets, a thousand years of experience feeding raw food to yeah. about a quarter of a million cats and dogs. Oh, wow. Okay. And so, uh, and, and their, and their uh, overwhelming impression was that uh, infection was very, very small. Bone blockage, things like that, very, very small. And one of the questions was, uh, what proportion of dogs, of, of uh, sick dogs, show an improvement when put onto raw food? And the figure was 85%. Oh, but what was goodness. also interesting was what proportion of healthy dogs show an improvement? So, so called healthy dogs show an improvement. And it, again, 85, I think one was 85, one was 86 percent. That was their impression from a thousand years of, of experience. And so uh, I'm, I look forward to publishing. Oh, yes, that. please, please. Very share it everywhere. Yeah, 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 we need to share that, of course. That's yeah, amazing. Sure. Yeah, because is, is what we were talking about. Like for, for vets, like dog, dog carers and pet carers, the, the, they hear it and they immediately click but but vets need the data they need the numbers they need the oh studies right is that that i hate that word every time they say to me there are no studies i mean you know what there are no studies that say that freshly squeezed oranges is better than coca-cola yeah but yet you know it's better right so yeah, sure. it, it's yeah. it's just but it's it's getting there it's it's just yeah we 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 will get there we are getting there um yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the whole dog risk study yeah. in Helsinki University, that's a very powerful thing. And also there's some great work being done at Massey University in um, Helsinki, in, in Finland, obviously. Uh, Massey University is in the North Island of uh, New Zealand. Yeah. Okay, so there is, there is work being done, okay? And 10 years ago, both of those things didn't exist. So um, it's... It'll happen. It'll happen. Uh, and yeah, we, we were talking about um, vets. How do you get vets? How do you convince vets? Yeah. And the answer, the answer is just pe people going along, person after person after person, going to the vet and saying, oh, yeah, I feed raw food. You know, they have to, you know, healthy dog, raw food. Next person, healthy dog, raw food. You know, you don't need many months of that every single day to start thinking these these raw fed dogs they really are looking amazing i must look into it okay there is going to be a a gradual uh, trickle effect yeah and within the raw feeding veterinary society we've got almost 150 vets and vet nurses within it yeah so it that's that's that's, that, that's growing um so like i say things are Things are moving in the right direction. We just have to, uh, you know, keep on, keep on doing what we're doing. Um, they always need money. So yeah. if anybody uh, rich people <laughs> are listening to this, uh, they definitely need money to do these studies. And uh, we'd be very grateful for some contribution there. Um, um, but yeah, I think just vocal support is, is really important. It's a lot, yeah, 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 yeah. It does a lot. Um, yeah, I, I organized, I, I subtitled into Spanish the videos for Dog Risk for the campaign that she had, and and we right. tried donated right. books also because I translated the Barf Diet, so I donated a bunch wow. of books to anybody that donates twenty euros. I'll give you a free book. I'll send it to your house, wow. but please donate. Wow. So because it, it they need it is is and and we need it. We all need it in the end because yeah brilliant yeah but uh, okay so going back to the raw feeding veterinary society because i think i think it's amazing i think uniting and joining that's what that's what's gonna help this a little bit more even this movement yeah. right yeah. and yeah and, I, and this year you open you said well if we have some open spots we will give it to nutritionists and all the paraprofessionals like you're opening also that and i and i love it because i think everybody can contribute in the end and, and and this is going to be a network that's going to expand right 
and and Absolutely. like right now what are, what are you your goals the goals of the society and the projects what, what's what's out there what what, what would you what like what, yeah uh, yeah what a great question um uh but for me personally i would like to do a conference twice a year okay it would be great to have a uh, uh, some kind of a journal, but because the amount of the amount of uh, material that uh, uh, springs up in, within the uh, the Facebook group mm. is you know there's you know every day somebody has found an article or has a question or uh, they found something uh, related so. Uh, uh, microbiome, uh, in, in, interesting stuff on microbiome, on gut physiology, on uh, uh, kind of food processing, or you know, lots of lots of ideas are bubbling up. It's just we because we're such a young uh, society, well, we haven't got the money to have you know to hire an editor to put all this stuff together. Yeah, and. Uh, Vets and vet nurses, there's, you know, they haven't got a lot of spare time to be doing those kind of things. So that's uh, it's, it's a shame. We have a secretary, and she she gives us a, a day, a week, yeah, and uh, and which which is great, which is really essential actually. She's really 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 busy, um, but uh, the, with any money that we raise, that's that's where where that goes to kind of keep everything ticking or ticking over. Um, so. Uh, that would be good. Uh, I'd love to have a do do some conferences in at Massey. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'd love to be able to earn or raise loads of money to send to Massey to Anna Anna Heim Bjorkman in in Helsinki. Uh, uh, would be really great. Um, I'd love to do a tour of of the US because they're they're, they're there's a lot of uh, very interesting projects, but like Keto Pet, for example, you yes. come across Keto Pet, amazing, where they're, where they're actually curing dogs of cancer by putting them on a keto, uh, ketogenic diet. And um, there's a lot of people doing some really interesting stuff over there. So I'd love to go and uh, see what, what they're up to. Uh, go, and see, go and see Rodney and go and see Karen <laughs> Becker, yeah. you know. See, see what they're up to. Um, so those would be just some ideas that that we would do. Um, I'd love to be able to get more more vets, more vet nurses into the vet group. Uh, it would be great to, if we could start maybe a paraprofessional group. Mm. Yeah, we've got a public group, and anybody can join that, and that's fantastic. But maybe it'd be great to have get a nutritionist. You know, a, a canine nutrition group would be amazing. Um, uh, I'm doing kind of, kind of more and more webinars like this, and yeah. so um, to get the to, the word out, you know, to get a Spanish speaking, uh, get the Spanish speaking world and, and bring bring them in. Um, uh, also, uh, other parts of the world. So, um, uh, yeah, wherever wherever people are, are feeling raw, you know, to, yeah. to say, listen, you're not alone. We're, we're, we're with you all the way. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, I went to Cato Pet. I, I visited them. Oh, did you? Yes. Wow. Yes, that's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, we yes. had Daniel, Daniel Orego. He's the, he's one of the uh, bosses there. He came over and no, he didn't. He, he couldn't get the flight. He was just about to get on the plane for our conference last year. Yeah. yeah. And he couldn't make it. His, his dad was sick. So he, we Skyped him into the conference and God bless him. He did really well. Uh, uh, so yeah, the keto pet, that's really, really remarkable. So if any of you guys are, are watching this, don't know about keto pet. Uh, it's a, it's a facility in, in, uh, in Texas. Austin, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And they've got about 60 dogs, uh, who they take from, from kill shelters. Uh, who have got cancer and they, they feed them on a, an amazing ke uh, ketogenic diet and they're taking bloods up to three times a day, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're transforming these dogs' lives. You know, you see, you see the pictures and if you go onto YouTube and you can see lots of stuff on YouTube, 
the dogs, they just have a whale of a time yeah, at this yeah, yeah. At effect. Yeah, you've been there. You tell me. What's, yeah, no, no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. When I went, Daniel yeah. wasn't there. I saw Paul Raybert, who, who was another of the directors. But yeah, yeah. but yeah, no, it was it was beautiful. I saw Kali, the dog, the first one that they got. Like it's it's amazing, and, and what they're doing there is is beautiful, right? Yeah, for sure. it's it's groundbreaking. It's just it's just um, I think it's very interesting, and it's very interesting. I asked them about pancreatitis because it's the main concern for for especially for vets. Yeah. Oh God, no, high fat, high fat. That's pancreatitis. You're gonna kill that dog. And yeah. they're like, well, yeah. we've never had not not one single case. In five yeah, years. Why do you think that is? Why do you, what's your theory on, hey, you're supposed to be interviewing me, but <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your theory on, on, on why they haven't got any pancreatitis and, and why are we seeing so much pancreatitis in, in, uh, in the general population, do you think? My theory, which might be completely wrong, is carbs, is, is the combination of carbs. High carbs and bad fats, that can take you to pancreatitis. I agree. Now, if you I have agree. healthy fats, good fats, no carbs, you know, the, the, the pancreas, what, what, what it suffers more than the amylase, not, not with the lipase, you know what I mean? So, or mm -hmm. lipase, I don't know how you pronounce it. But, lipase, yeah, yeah. But, but that's a very simple, simple answer. But tell me your theory. No, no, that's it. That's exactly it. It's not the fats because Keith and Pat proved it's not the fats, really. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so what else is it? It's probably not the protein. Uh, so it must be the carbs, you know. Yeah. And you know, if you if you look at authors like uh, Gary Taubes, uh, and his his um, his book Sugar, um, mm -hmm. the what's it? The Case Against Sugar. Yeah. And you've got uh, Dr. Jason Fung, The Obesity Code. Yeah. They're all pointing the finger. And a pattern as well, you know, he's the veterinary version of, of Taubes and Fung. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're all pointing the finger at carbohydrates. Sugar, yeah. You know? And so I think it, uh, uh, my thought is exactly with you that I think it's the carbs that, that are doing the damage. And, yeah. and what about the obesity epidemic that we've got at the moment? In the UK and in the States, it's about 60%. 60% yeah. of dogs and cats are overweight or obese. You know? Yeah, no, and and people, it's really, it's it's really obesity is something that I'm I'm really passionate about. Several subjects: one is cancer, the other one is obesity, the other one is intolerances, because it's mm -hmm. like okay, we we need to really sit down and think, right? And and with the obesity, the the main problem is people don't notice; they don't even know. You every time somebody comes to see me for a private consultation, I tell them, okay, like. I can say really about 80% of the people that come and they don't come for that problem. They come from other problems. Yeah. And they're overweight. They, they overweight or obese. And I said to them, okay, listen, we need to, we need to do something about the weight too. No, no, he's not fat. She's not fat. It's like, okay, I understand <laughs> that you don't see it. But yes, he is. Yeah. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, what's really useful is, uh, Royal Cannon are really, really uh, promoting the idea of body condition score. You know, they've got these charts. Yeah. yeah. So it, I, I don't usually have, I have a problem with people. I just say to them, the dog needs to <laughs> wait. I just I don't sugarcoat it in the slightest. Yeah. And they go, oh, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, um, what, what, you, what one could do is you just get one of those one of those sheets and they do it for different breeds yeah so if it's a it's a, if it's a, a pointer that comes in and it's overweight you just say you tell me because there's little descriptions on there yeah it's yeah, you know yeah, yeah. You, can you feel can you feel the ribs can you feel yeah. the hips yeah is the, the fat under the neck yeah. and what have you you know um so that is kind of that that Perhaps for me, if, so, if I had somebody who just refused to acknowledge that the dog was overweight, especially if they had arthritis or something, uh, I would just give them that sheet and I'd just say, you tell me where you think your dog is. And I think, or send them home with it to, to let them yeah. uh, uh, brood on it for a while, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's what I would do. Yeah, and then it's so easy to either lose weight or gain weight with raw food. It's just... Oh, totally, totally. It's so I, yeah, easy. most dogs. 
yeah, most dogs are overweight and most dogs do trim down really nicely on raw food. I find that sometimes uh, some dogs, I think they tend to be older dogs. I think it's because their microbiome is not great mm -hmm. uh, that they can't cope without the carb. You have to give them some carb. Uh, because you know some of these dogs are eating twice as much food yeah. that as as they need, and yet they're still either losing weight or they can't gain weight. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And with those ones, I will bring in quinoa or amaranth or okay. buckwheat. Yeah, so non-grain, yeah. stodgy things just to bring up the insulin a tiny bit to yeah. to to get them to start storing. Uh, storing some fat and, and, and put on some, uh, some muscle tissue that's right yeah um but it's a real shame i don't like doing it but uh you know if the owner is going oh my goodness i must go back to kibble then i think that's a good yeah compliment. no no please no <laughs> yeah 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 but this is the other thing with this diet that i think that this is a big thing with with the fear of you know what if i'm doing it wrong because there's of course a lot of fears but I keep telling people like this is please, 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 common sense. Just yeah. if your dog, because I've had people coming to me like, okay, my dog is eating two percent and still getting fatter. It's like give him less. Like yeah, go down. No, yeah. but it's from two to three percent. I can't give less. No, no, no. Of course yeah. you can, especially if you have a gigantic dog or you know what I mean. It's like. Or tiny dogs, they're like, it's losing weight. I'm at 3%. It's losing weight. Well, give them 4%. Like, yep. That's the first thing to do is just increase the food. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Just first, first do that. And then, and then let's, but, but is that, again, the fear is there, right? Is, 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 I, I, I keep attacking all those fears. I keep talking to people about what you said about they're cooking for themselves. It's like, yeah. I, I tell a story about my kid all the time when I went to the, to the pediatrician when he was six months and she's like, okay, you're going to start with solids now. And I'm like, okay, give me my menu or something. And she's like, oh, Monica, come on, common sense, go home. You know, natural is better. Just cook some vegetables and then start by that and then meat. And then, and then, and it's like, they let you go home with a baby, with a human baby <laughs> to do whatever the hell you want. And they haven't done a blood checkup of my son ever. Yeah. Because unless they're sick, they don't do it. Do you know what I mean? But it's yeah. this thing that, yeah. that do not attempt to give them anything but this because you're going to kill him. So, of course, people are yeah. terrified. They're like, I'm going to kill my dog. That's for sure. I know. I say to people that you've got to work really hard to damage a dog with raw food. Yeah. You can. You know, just feed liver and nothing but liver for years and years and years, you're going to get problems. Yeah. Uh, but if you feed variety and you get the macronutrients right and you're feeding plenty of greens, you're just going to you're going to have difficulty causing yeah. problems. I keep telling right? people, like, listen, there are a few simple rules for barf. You know, what yeah. I mean? bones are essential. You cannot give only meat, of course. But then if you just, with those essentials, you have to be very bad to do it bad, right? Yeah, Good exactly. Work. Yeah. I think that's one of the beauties for me. One of the beauties of raw is it's so simple. You, know, you, can, you, could, you could give somebody the idea in about two minutes, <laughs> uh, which would be terrible for me because I take a whole day to, to, to explain <laughs> I did a lot of seminars, you know, and so that would kill, <laughs> kill my income. <laughs> but you, you can take it like that. You can look at it. And I, I could, you know, say to somebody, right, this is the basics. Boom, boom, boom. That's yeah. it. Okay. Or we can say, right, proteins. Let's look at proteins. Uh, bones. What, what sort of bone and how do you introduce them? Uh, um, how, much, how much quantity do you feed? Yeah. Uh, how do you avoid... Uh, how do you avoid any problems? Um, um, what do you expect? La 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 la. So we do we do a whole a whole day on 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 raw feeding. People love it as well. You know they, it's because it's 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 exciting. It's logical. Yeah. It's fun. And once they, as you say, once they get over the fear, yeah, then. 
they just like just it's like they you know it's like a kid riding a bike you know for the first time they can't ride they can't ride they're scared they're going to fall over and then all of a sudden they're riding you know you know <laughs> the face of a child when they when they first get riding a bicycle that's what the clown <laughs> looks like when they actually discover how easy raw food is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i love it it's, it's just beautiful yeah. It's I know, beautiful. that's good. Yeah. And it's simple, yeah? yeah? I like simple things. Yeah, no, <laughs> me too, me too. I love when, when yeah. Billy Hurst also, we, I brought him to Spain to give the seminar here also. And he started a seminar by saying, okay, first thing I'm going to tell you is stay away from anybody that tells you that you need to be an expert to feed your dog well. You don't yeah. need to be an expert. If you want to learn, that's one thing. If you like nutrition and you, you want to go deep into it, that's great. But you don't need it. The truth is you don't sure. need to know all that to feed your dog yeah. or your cat. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, nobody has all the answers. You know, Billinghurst, uh, Lonsdale, yeah. um, uh, Karen Becker, you know, all these amazing people. Nobody can put their hand on their heart and say, this yeah. is the answer, you know, because every dog is different. You know, yeah. there's not, you know, we're not, uh, if, if, it's, you can't produce a uniform diet. You just need to teach people a few basic principles and they say, go enjoy. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. And, and also, uh, I, I want to say this because I, I told you when we were there in Manchester and I, and I, I want people to know that I, I was watching one of your videos and it changed my complete approach because I was very radical right, in my approach to it is it has to be raw <laughs> it has okay. to be raw food you can't feed your dog or your cat anything else because no no I, i'm passionate about it so so it was all about that and then i saw this video of you saying about how can you can just gradually improve you know the the well some people can't or won't do it or whatever there's many reasons and many different circumstances in people's lives that may prevent them from do raw as as i love it and 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 tell me a little bit about that or tell speaking the spanish speaking okay. About okay. That. okay that's that's good thank you for saying i really appreciate that um i what the way in my lectures what i do is i say there is and i show a picture of a, a, a wavelengths of light you know yeah so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, yeah, go all the way up, okay? And, uh, and I say that, that nutrition is, there is a spectrum of nutrition. Down at the bottom, you've got horrible, cheap, nasty, uh, uh, dried food, okay? Yeah, the really, really cheap stuff, yeah. okay? It's just the kind of thing that farmers feed their dogs, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, and many breeders just, like, here. Breeder, <laughs> really? Okay, oh. well, yeah. Okay, so you've got the really terrible stuff down at the bottom, and then up at the top end, <clears throat> you've got you've got somebody who owns three thousand acres, and they have venison and sheep and chickens and beef and and what have you, and they have uh, three hectares of vegetable garden and herb garden. Okay. And they, they create the food every day from organic or biodynamic. Yeah, that's way up at the top. Okay. Yeah. And for me, uh, and then you've got uh, 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 down at the bottom end, you've then got the, uh, the cheap but, but uh, better dried foods. And then you've got things like James Wellbeloved and then Arden Grange. And then you've got the Canagan and... Um, and then you've got uh, macadams and some, some of the really high-end uh, uh, kibbles. And then uh, you've got the, the cheaper end of the raw food market going right up to creating your own diet yourself, okay? So for me, I say to people, any move up the spectrum of nutrition is a good move. Yeah, so if you're feeding really, really I I'm not, can't fit it on the <laughs> screen, if you're feeding really, really rubbish food and then you start to feed a slightly better kibble and maybe a little bit of meat here and there, 
Good for you. Fabulous. Really great. Okay. Because if they can then see that improvement, then that, that will inspire them to move up a little bit further, perhaps. Yeah. And, I'll, and I'll say now, for just for the record, I think that good kibble is better than bad raw. Okay? If, yeah. if you really, really, really don't get it and you're feeding nothing but liver for years and years and years, that is, that is worse than feeding the better, the better kibbles. Okay? Yeah. Just for the record. However... <laughs> Uh, I would I would always go raw. In, interesting in the in the seventy nine vet study, yeah. Um, uh, there are a number of the vets who said some vets, it's, some dogs just can't cope with raw. Okay, sometimes mm. if they're a bit old or or maybe they've had antibiotics and their microbiome has just you know been been really wrecked, then uh, in, in those cases uh, feeding a cooked diet so i was kind of inspired by that actually uh the, the you know a thousand years of, of of experience says that sometimes you just got to go for a home cooked diet and i'm totally happy with that you know um so there you go that's that's how i i i, I, I i'm trying to make the the world inclusive and trying to get everybody on board and, and moving up the the spectrum yeah no, um, that's so amazing that's, that's because a lot of people tell me well but i can only afford to buy chicken in the supermarket and those chickens have hormones and antibiotics and, and i'm like yeah of course well can you afford to buy organic no well then that is going to be a lot better than the kibble or whatever right but, but, but that idea of inclusiveness and that idea of i think it's beautiful because a lot of people start if, if I start my speech or you start your speech by only raw, you lose uh -huh. a lot of people. They just go. Yeah. They're gone. But if, if, if you're inclusive, they're going to start little by little. And what you said, when, when they see how the dog enjoys or how the dog improves or how everything starts getting better, that may push them a little bit. That, that's going to, and then that, those may, may end up giving raw food. Who yeah. knows, right? Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna let you go because because. <laughs> thank you very much for your time, really, and for your answers. I, I'm gonna ask you two last questions, right? It's the same question, but if you could say just one thing, just one, uh -huh. to vets, and the same question to carers, because I don't know if they're different for you. They might or not. You could say just one thing to them about raw diet. What, what, what would you tell them? Okay, I can do it in two words. Yeah. Try it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because you, you can talk to carers, you can talk to vets until you're blue in the face. But and they'll, they, if they choose not to uh, want to uh, hear what you're saying, they're not going to try it. But all I would say to them, say to them don't believe me. Don't believe the books, don't believe any of it. Just try it for a couple of weeks, okay? And the dog or the cat, they will convince you, okay? So that's, that would be my answer to that one. Just try it. Thank you, thank you so very much. Uh, thank you for your time, for your answers, for, for everything that you're doing and about all this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put, of course, a word out about the raw feeding society and and, and there's right, a lot of vets that are that are joining that i know uh, from Chile, as i said argentina i have a lot of people so i'm going to talk to them because it's it we need it we need this and we need we need this to grow and to keep you know uniting forces there That's right fantastic. yeah yeah yeah. it's really really good in fact in in argentina you have uh authentica is a is a raw food brand that that I, I've done some work with them and they're they're very good. Authentica. Authentica. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna write check them out. I'm gonna yeah, forget. Check them out. That's amazing. Because I have a lot of vets from Argentina uh, doing courses with me and everything, and and, oh, wow. and I don't know about That's brands true. because of course there I have no idea. But it's but it's good to know. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Monica, Great. you're doing some great work. Really, really appreciate it. If we at the Raw Feeding Veterinary Society, 
if we can help you, just let us know. Uh, look forward to seeing you, I hope, at the conference next year. Oh, yes. Um, and, yeah, just um, uh, if you come across anything interesting, ping, ping it over to me, articles, ideas, scare stories, whatever it might be. Yeah, if you can monitor the Spanish-speaking world for us and just feed in, yeah. that'd be amazing. We'd really, really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, keep up the good work. You no, know, thank you. Thank you, really, for being an inspiration and for doing all that you are doing, really. Thank yes. you very much, and have a wonderful day. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Monica. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.